Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Childhood Finds. Thank you for joining me for another What Sold video. I wanted to say thank you to all of you for your kind words and sharing your stories over the last couple videos with me of moving through hard times. And I just, I'm appreciative of many of you being able to share and just be kind. I hope that in the future, my only goal was that maybe this talking about it would help someone else. So that's what I'm shooting for. And I feel like maybe that could happen. I have been doing okay this week, got through some more stuff. My eBay store is doing better. It's not where it still needs to be, but at least I'm bringing in some money. So I'm actually, I think I doubled what I did last week, which still isn't great because it wasn't that good the week before, but it's better. And once I really start to get back into listing and I'm able to source again, so I'm able to find more good inventory, because that's the kind of the thing I've run into, which many resellers do is it starts to get sometimes a little stale during winter when you're not out actively sourcing new inventory and you may just have things that were in your death pile. But it's been good to get through that kind of stuff. So I've been working through it and hope to get some new stuff later on. I have some stuff to share with you, a couple decent sales, a lot of, you know, typical sales from me, a little bit of everything as always. And I wanted to share too, I started finding, I refound a hobby that I really haven't done much over the last few years because it was something it, so I'm starting another little YouTube channel, just another little fun one. And I want to be able to maybe share some of it on here eventually because I think it could be relevant. So my brother, probably two decades ago, taught me how to make these macrame necklaces, like the one I'm wearing and you've probably seen me wear in previous videos. It's something after he passed away that I stopped doing, but I started doing it recently to cope again just because it helped me feel connected to those people that I've lost. And it's been fun. So I thought, you know what, if I'm going to have a whole bunch, I already have a ton to keep. Why don't I sell some of them? So I'm going to share that on a different channel called Macrame Sarah. I'll link it down in the description if it's something you're interested in. I eventually might do how-to videos, what sold videos, etc. if it comes to that. I don't know if I'll sell any of it. I'm just doing this for fun and I thought if things do start to sell that maybe I can talk a little bit about that on here just because I think it could be relevant and it could be another stream of income for some of you on here and just another avenue to look at because you know that's all about what this channel is is sharing things that you can find to sell and in this case it would just be finding the material to make and then sell so I thought that might be fun in the future to talk about if anything comes of it but for right now I'm just having fun doing it so you can check out that channel if you'd like and I just opened up an Etsy shop, guys. I, I'm considering maybe adding some of my higher dollar vintage items on there because I've really never sold on Etsy. And seeing how that goes and being able to share insights about Etsy with you guys because I haven't been able to in the past. So we'll see what comes of this. And now we're going to go ahead and get started on what sold. And as always, I would love since I haven't talk, done this in a couple videos, is please in the comments share with me any of your favorite sales if you're a reseller, anything you found that if you're not a seller that you found that was amazing out there in the wild, or if you like any of my items, you can share that too, um, just so we can all chat and learn together. And let's go ahead and get started with those sales. This first one is an A&W plush, the great root beer gun. 2016 inch plush stuffed animal vintage read. I sold it for a best offer of $19. I believe I paid about a dollar for this at a thrift store. It's been a very long time. I think it's probably been listed at least a year and a half, but it finally sold. It was kind of big, but it did go international, which was interesting. And this is a Gorm Strasbourg Sterling flat handle butter spreader knife, no monogram. And I sold this for best offer of $15. It actually had been listed for a fair amount of time. I got it at the big estate sales that I did last year, if you've watched my channel previously, and I did a haul video on. And so it's taken quite a long time to sell, and I realized when I was doing inventory after the move, I didn't have the pattern name in there. So I took my own advice from my flatware video and went on to replacements.com and found the pattern, 
and then it sold within a couple days of putting that on there. So the pattern really does help, guys. And this is a Squishmallow Hug Me's 14 inch Easter 2021 Desiree the Green Dragon Kelly Toy Plush. And it sold for the full asking of $14.95. I got it for $2. I really need to make myself stop picking up these Squishmallows because they just, they're so big and they sit. And a lot of them don't sell for a ton. Some do, absolutely. But a lot of them don't and they're huge and they take a while. But I made a profit on this. And it, did, it took a few months to sell, I think since December, so not terrible. Then this I picked up at an estate sale. And I'm trying to remember, I think it was $5. $5 at the very most. I believe it was 5 And it was a Winchester Men's Trap Skeet Shooting Hunting Vest Size Large Mesh Red and Black. Sold for the full asking of $28.95. And took a fair amount of time to sell, but it's on its way to its new home. This I picked up for five dollars with another with a pile of vintage board games, and it's a vintage 1964 James Bond Secret Agent 007 board game Milton Bradley complete. Best offer of thirty dollars for it, so not a bad profit, and it's been listed for I think at this point a month or two. This I was really sad to see go, and I honestly, if I didn't need the money, I wouldn't have sold it. I really, really wanted to keep it, but I just after, you know, the month I've been through, I just needed the cash flow. But hopefully I'll find another one if I keep putting good karma into the world. Find another one that I can keep. And this is Thinner by Richard Bachman, Stephen King, true first edition, first printing. Sold for best offer of $85. And I paid $5 for this at a sale. And it's been listed quite a long time because I was looking for higher dollar for it because... Selfishly, I wanted to keep it, and that's not how you should price your items, guys. I try not to do that very often, but I really wanted to keep this one. But a decent offer came through. And I was going to take it down. But that uh, this next one is a wicker leather fishing creel basket woven shoulder strap vintage. These fishing creels can go for pretty decent money. We got these at a rummage sale for a dollar and sold it for a best offer of $25. This was a good find. This was at a sale last November and it sat in my death pile for probably three-ish months and I've only had it listed for a couple weeks. I have maybe 25 to 50 cents into it and it's a 90s Disney Splash Mountain shirt, large extra large character designs made USA read and it sold for the full asking price. I remember I got a low offer for this one and I got annoyed with the person because I don't enjoy when they try to talk down my items to get a discount. I can work with people, but they told me due to the multiple stains all over it that they were offering what they were offering and et cetera, et cetera. And it's a single stain and it's hardly noticeable. You can barely see it, guys. It's very hardly noticeable, but I am going to share that because this is an expensive purchase for someone and I want them to be aware of it. And, but it's finally sold for the price on my sale. Uh, and I have a 10% off sale right now, just again, to get inventory moving. And it sold for the $89.96. And I will try to either, maybe not next week, but definitely the week after, I'm gonna try to do the video of all the profit I made again, just like I'd done previously. I just got out of sync a little bit with the last month. So I'll try to get back to incorporating that in once a month. And these are Christ Hippo Hippopotamus Anthropomorphic Salt and Pepper Shaker Set Animal. I got these in a little bulk lot of salt and pepper shakers, I think at least two years ago now, because I can tell by this picture it's old, and I can tell that I have had to move these three times because of when it was. And it sold for finally a best offer of 18. I took it real fast. And Christ is a good thing to look for. I've sold a few things by that and it's always pretty decent money. Here's a little more flatware. It's Oneida USA Stainless Unity Salad Fork Set, a lot of four, sold for the asking of $15.25. And again, about 15 to 20 cents into each piece. This wasn't the best buy ever, but it was still pretty decent. Uh, my mother-in-law found this at a sale and we paid, I believe 15 for the set. And it's an Apollo by Renard Rice's Sons Inc 
antique cocktail shaker five piece set from 1924 and I took a best offer of $55 for it. So not a huge come up, but it's still absolutely a good profit because I mean, that's, it's a good profit. It really is. And it wasn't too bad to pack. So not a bad buy by any means. Then this, we have a Springbok Hallmark on the Right Track Lionel Trains 1500 piece jigsaw puzzle. And it sold for the sale price of $14.36. And I picked this up for a dollar at an estate sale. And it's only taken, I think maybe a month to sell. This I picked up at a sale and I paid up for this because it was with, it was with other buckles that were more valuable. And so I paid $7.50 for it and took a best offer of $25, but still a profit. Just paid up for it so I could get the other ones worth more. And it's a Reno 2009 Air Races National Championship Limited Edition Brass Belt Buckle. And the best offer of $25. I pick up this Reno Air Races stuff because, well, I'm in the area and it tends to sell pretty decently. And they're not doing the Reno Air Races anymore. This I got at a thrift store, I believe, for $1.99. And it's a Gazelle E&J Classic Limited 15-inch plus realistic prima collection antelope if you can find these enj classic prima collections they always tend to be some decent money um, not all of them but i've sold some others i sold just a little tiger that was actually mine from when i was a kid and i sold that a couple years ago for 45 bucks it was like eight inches so it can absolutely be a good brand to pick up and if i didn't say it sold for 28 dollars in less than a month this I picked up at a thrift store for 99 cents. It's a Wild Republic Cuddlekins Golden Lion Tamarind Plush Monkey, 10 inch stuffed animal. Nothing super special, just cute. Sold for the sale price of 11.66. I picked this up. I've actually, I really tried to start watching for Build-A-Bear clothing on plush because I've sold a few of those in the past where you'll see Build-A-Bears out in the wild and you'll go, oh, that's not worth very much. And then I just take the clothing off after and I'll either donate or find someone to that wants the plush um, because a lot of times those Build-A-Bear basic bears, they only sell for maybe eight to $10 and they sit forever. So I won't always sell them with it in, unless they were the ones that went with the clothing. And this is just a Buddy the Elf Build-A-Bear clothes only shirt, shoes, pants, Christmas movie. Sold for a best offer of $15, and I got the plush with this outfit for a dollar. And if you're at, say, the Goodwill bins, you just rip the clothes off and throw the plush back, and that can make you some good money because these clothing pieces tend to weigh almost nothing. This I picked up at an estate sale, I believe at the same one as the Lionel Trains puzzle for a dollar. And it's a Vital Sassoon 3 4 inch Pro Curl Styling Iron curling 2001 vintage sold for the sale price of 1976 and didn't take very long to sell actually i'm always surprised when stuff like that sells but i know that there's people that once you get attached to a certain piece of equipment that you're going to look for it if it ever goes down because you like it and you're used to it so it makes sense and this is a thomas kincaid painter of light congress cellutone playing cards new 2004 these weren't a great buy i picked them up at a thrift store for a dollar 99 and but they sold for 10 or 9.95 and they sold in less than a week so it's not a terrible buy i still made money but you know still not a huge profit and they went quick so i would still do this again oh, come on computer we're almost there Well, maybe I'll try to cut this out. I'm trying to see if I can go to a different page. Or if it's just gonna, there we go. Okay, so this is the Dog Artist Collection Bull Terrier Plush Big Head 2003 Vintage No Sound. The box was not in good condition. I would, absolutely did not put this as new because it was not in new condition, but did have the box. It sold for the full asking of $12.55. I picked this up at a yard sale for 50 cents. Um, not a huge profit. It took a little while to sell, but it's an easy sale and I'd definitely do it again. And then these I picked up in the, if you've watched my channel before, the SPCA does these, did the, used to do these bin sales. And so I picked these up for about a quarter and they're playing card 
hand, silver tone, modern cufflinks, gambling, Las Vegas poker aces. Sold for $10.13 on Mercari. And this is after the change in Mercari's uh, system. So they recently went from having the sellers pay the fees to having the buyers pay the fees. I still don't know how I feel about it. I don't, if it was to me, I don't feel it's the best business standpoint, but I, I don't know because we really haven't seen this, I don't believe on platforms. So maybe it'll work. I've gotten a few sales, uh, no more nor less than before. It's never been a huge platform for me. So I think it's just more of a wait and see. And I really think to get a good opinion, we'd have to find someone that sold a lot on Mercari before and to see how they're doing now. Um, but it's nice, you know, it was nice. The offers that I was getting, I was able to just say like, okay, you know, I already know I'm making exactly, I took an offer for $10 on an item and knew I was making $10 on it. So that's nice, but I don't, I think it, to me, I see it as even if we lower our prices, to compensate for the fees the buyer is paying, it's still that psychological effect where they see that fee and don't want to pay it. So who knows? I think we just have to wait and see um, how it does. Maybe it'll the Mercari will go under or they'll go back to the old way or this way will thrive. We'll see. And I'll keep you updated on how my sales are doing. I've gotten a few sales since and, you know, I'm happy with that. But my computer's going to definitely be slow now, even though I got all this ready before. Okay, and this next one that the picture will load here in a minute, they're vintage signed Monet, small knot loop, silver gold tone, clip-on earrings. They're just tiny little things. They've been listed since February of 2023, and I finally just took an offer of $9 on Mercari. Again, I made $9, so there was no fees, so it was easier to take that. I think I have... A about 50 to 75 cents into these earrings. And this next one, I accepted an offer for this item and the next item together. And so with this item and the next one, oh, this is fun. Sorry guys, technical difficulties. It's going to be $19 I accepted. So about 9.50 per item. And this is a brass metal sign, fireplace hanging metal, open closed damper vintage picked it up at a yard sale I think for 50 cents and sold it it's been listed for quite a long time along with this brass item which is why I definitely took the offers because both of these items have been listed quite a long time so this is a brass gnome forest dwarf four inch figurine Ireland souvenir holding basket pot and it sold them <coughs> excuse me for the 950 as well with the other brass piece and I have a dollar into that one. Then we have here, this has been listed quite a long time. I remember picking this up for about a dollar and it's been listed, I think through two Valentine's days now and finally sold here in April. And it's a Hallmark Hartley dog stuffed plush golden retriever, yellow lab Valentine's day sold for $20 on Poshmark. And this is why, you know, I, I do like selling on the other platforms because this item has been through a couple markdowns in my eBay store and I don't go through and mark down my Mercari or Poshmark. I just don't find the time to do so. And this is, I checked when I was delisting on eBay, this was listed for $14 on eBay. So I did make more money by selling it on Poshmark, but it did take forever. And our last item here is a piece of Wedgwood. It came from my big Wedgwood buy. I have a fair amount into this, I think probably seven to eight dollars. And that's just because I had other valuable pieces. So I still made a little profit on this one, but it's not, I tend to take a, um, I tend to take a, when I buy a bulk lot, I divide it by the number of items I list. And then that's how I get my cost. So sometimes prices seem really high or really low that I pay. And this is a Wedgwood Jasperware dark blue oval trinket jewelry box with lid sold for $15 on Poshmark. And it's taken a fair amount of time to sell, but that's a good chunk of what I sold this week. And the sales are picking up some and hopefully will continue to do so since I will actually really start to be able to work on my store again. And so thank you all for joining me. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one and I look forward to getting back on to a normal routine and getting a couple videos out a week here in the next few weeks. So see you guys on the next one.